Hello everyone, I'm Joanna and I'm going to present the project my colleagues and I have been working on, which is titled Are Natural Domain Foundation Models Useful for Medical Image Classification? I'm going to give a quick overview of the work, but please check out the paper for further details. I believe that the name of the paper is quite descriptive of what we tried to do. We investigated the adaptability of different vision foundation models, trained on natural images, to the domain of medical image classification. We assess their transfer learning performance against the ImageNet free training, which is the standard practice. And to give a sneak peek of the results, we found that DynaV2 consistently outperforms the baselines and other foundations. And even though the representations are rich, it still needs some fine tuning to surpass the baselines. To understand a bit the motivation, nowadays the computer vision field is following the steps of NLP, uh, shifting towards the use of foundation models which are generally pre-trained using large-scale datasets and have great zero-shot capabilities or are able to adapt very easily to the different domains. However, these are pre-trained on natural domain images and their applicability to the medical domain is still unclear. That's what we're trying to figure out in this work. We focused on several models that represent a variety of different architectures and pre-training schemes. SEM and SIM are both encoder-decoder architectures trained for segmentation, and of course we use the encoder to generate our image representations. Then we also evaluate DynaV2, which is an all-purpose feature model, and finally Blip and Clip, which use different text-guided pre-training. For the baselines, we use models pre-trained on ImageNet, either supervised as the EIT or unsupervised as DynaV1. We also included ResNet150, which is a CNN model for a more complete comparison. Everything was evaluated using four different medical datasets that are of different sizes, ranging from around 3K to 220K images. The models were extensively evaluated using different scenarios. We tested their performance when appending either a linear head or a full DIT as a classifier. Then we also compared the performance when using the foundation model frozen as a feature extractor or fine tuning it along with the classifier. Apart from that, we did additional evaluations to not only assess the performance, but also to understand the behavior. And now moving on to the interesting part, which are the results. Here you can see all the numbers. Where it's more significant is that DynaV2 here and here outperforms all of the other models and also the baselines when it's fine-tuned. And if you check the values, appending a DIT classifier or just using a linear head doesn't really make a difference. Apart from that, SIM matches the performance of the baselines and the other models lag behind. We also perform some ablations to understand the role of the different layers. As you can see here, freezing up to the eighth block doesn't really make a difference, but then the performance drops a lot. This indicates that the high level features from the foundation models are not well suited for the medical tasks right out of the box. And this is also consistent with the next experiment we did. Here we didn't use the whole foundation model, but a subset of layers. Adding the last few layers only improves the performance of the model if it's able to adapt to the data. Here, that it's unfrozen. And here we show the CKA analysis of the models before and after fine tuning. Again, a significant transformation is observed in many of the last layers of the fine tuned models. Earlier layers require minimal adaptation. When comparing just the last layers of the models, we can see that each of them give unique representations. The combination of the pre-training scheme, task, and architecture all result in different image representations, and BLIP is the most dissimilar one. Finally, some practicalities. DynaV2 has similar training times and also inference times to the baseline while achieving better performance. We also check the impact of using high-resolution images it benefited all the models, no matter if they were pre-trained at high resolution, like SAM, or not. But again, it benefited DynaV2 the most. And since all of the evaluations were done using similar model complexity, for fairness, we checked the impact of this in the performance. Bigger models only seemed to favor the larger datasets, but didn't have much of an impact in the smaller ones. And now to summarize, this is what we learned. DynaV2 serves as a solid base for transfer learning in medical images. Other foundation models, however, fail to outperform. Adapting the high-level features is key to obtain optimal results. Appending a DIT classifier only results in marginal performance gain, and high-resolution fine-tuning does improve the performance. So this is our paper in a nutshell. Thank you for watching the video, and please feel free to check out the paper for further details.